Welcome back, everybody. Sin number six, isolation. So, in the change management process, what do you what do you mean by isolation? What are you what are you talking about? Isolation is similar, in a way, to the a sin we talked about a little while ago in the previous blog called arrogance. Mm -hmm. And we said arrogance is about not considering the the potential. Uh, for others in the organization to contribute and not have the, the structure in place. Isolation is not really involving the folks, say, in the, the leadership of change mm -hmm. in a unified team process. Mm -hmm. And it's another form of the I can do this all by myself right. fault in change. And to overcome isolation, what you really have to focus on is building solid team skills and the kinds of behaviors that are required mm -hmm. uh, for teams to be effective. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about doing that? Well, I think a, a wonderful model, and many folks out there may have read Patrick Lencioni's Five Design Dysfunction of a Team, mm -hmm. and we like to think about that and kind of the, the other way around. What are the five functions that are required of a team to be successful? Mm -hmm. right. and in something that is as risky as change, it's really important that you have those foundations in place. Have you built trust and open and honest communication? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. any change process. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. I have to know we're all here for the same reason. Mm -hmm. okay? That I know what you're doing, mm -hmm. that you're competent in what you're doing, mm -hmm. that you're going to have some kind of consistent reactions right. to different situations right. okay. and that our values and objectives are congruent. We call that the three C's of trust, right. and competence, consistency, and congruence. Mm -hmm. And ensuring that you have those kinds of discussions for the leadership team to make sure you're all on the same mm -hmm. page and you've enabled others in your organization to do that. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't build that level of trust, you can never engage in meaningful, productive conflict. Right, right. Now, why would you want to purposefully have conflict on a team? Well, you know, if I think it was Henry Ford that once said, mm -hmm. "I may, I may be wrong on that. that two of us think the same way; one of us isn't necessary." <laughs> right. uh, um, differences in ideas and ways of thinking are absolutely essential to get synergy mm -hmm. in the team. Mm -hmm. So what we want is open and productive conflict of ideas mm -hmm. while we minimize interpersonal conflict. That's mm -hmm. the harmful kind of conflict. Right. Because yeah. if people can't have that kind of interaction right. and share those differences of opinion, they'll never buy into the yeah. solution. So, yeah. the, so the third thing you have to build is that buy-in and commitment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're saying, they did it right. Right. to me. Yeah. There they go again. Mm -hmm. Now, without buy-in and commitment, we don't get a sense of personal accountability mm -hmm. for the outcome. Absolutely. And that leads us to minimize, or to at least not maximize, the results that we get. And we aren't focusing on team-level results. We tend to focus more on individual-level mm -hmm. results. You know, I heard somewhere, uh, someone said this, and you can maybe piggyback on this. If I don't believe the messenger, I won't believe the message. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the leadership team that you were then talking about is they're going to then be role models for the whole change process. So there has to be the synchronicity, the synergy that you're talking about to move forward and to move the change process forward. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yes. And my colleague, uh, Dr. John Hoover, has a, a saying that I, I think is very powerful that's, that's related to that. He says, the message is always about the sender. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, we tend to uh, to get the fullest out of communication. We have to recognize that part of the message that's coming our way is about the person that's sending the message. Right. And if I don't buy into the person that's sending the message, I'll tend to not buy into the message itself. So that is a perfect jumping off point for the next sentence. Well, let's jump. Okay, so that is sin number six. We're going to come back and do the final... Uh, seventh sin mushrooming. This is good, so we'll see you in a minute.